Hey coaches, this is Coach Sheffer. I'm back here with another defensive video on how I would use the 3-4 defense or how I have used the 3-4 defense to defend the flex bone inside veer. Uh, and this is a presentation based on how I would defend it if I was at a high school or below, maybe at a youth level or a middle school level. Now, um, welcome to my channel. Uh, my blog is obsessedwithoffense.com. Uh, please check it out. Got some good stuff on there. Uh, I do have a post already about how I are, how I have defended the flex bone in the past. Uh, so please check that out. I know it says obsessed with offense because I I do usually talk about offense and stuff, but sometimes I like to get into the defensive aspect of football. Now. Um, Go ahead and try and follow me on Twitter. Uh, I do post some other stuff on Twitter as well. Uh, please like my video. Please subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos. And I really appreciate everybody's support. All right, so um, this might be a little hard to see. I apologize for the small font. But uh, let's assume that I have already scouted this opposing team. And their offense is a flex bone, meaning they have a fullback two wings, and two receivers and a QB under center. So think Georgia Tech, uh, their normal base offensive uh, formation. Um, uh, Navy usually runs this formation as well. Um, very common in high school. Uh, kind of, not necessarily, I don't think I've seen this particular offense in the youth levels necessarily, not as much. Um, maybe not as much as in middle school because I think it, high school is where the kids really start to get to understand how to make their reads and whatnot. Uh, and so their main play, I'm assuming, based on uh, the scouting off of their offense, I, their main play, the one they run a lot, and the one that I want to take away is the triple option or what most people call the inside veer. All right, so here is their offensive uh, formation. So most of you may recognize this formation if you know anything about Georgia Tech or Navy or sometimes Army, other triple option teams. Uh, this is kind of like the old school flex bone. Uh, there are some new spread triple options, which will use formations derived from this, but from a shotgun. But this is the old school inside veer triple option offense. And so my objectives, especially if I am a uh, middle school youth league, uh, my objectives here are to take away the fullback dive because that's what most triple option teams want to do. I have coached in triple option teams. I know what they want to do. We want to give the foot fullback the football. That's what we want to do. Um, and so as a defend, de uh, defensive coordinator, I want to take away that fullback dive. I want to take that away from them so that they can't have it. Uh, also, the other thing I want to take away is to take away the wingback pitch, which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, the reason being is the fullback and the wingback are going to be the two best runners on the team, usually, especially at the high school and uh, below. Uh, sometimes you'll get triple option teams who will put just basically another running back in at quarterback. And so this, this particular defense might not necessarily be for that because what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to force the QB to run the ball. I want the quarterback to run the ball on this offense because uh, most quarterbacks at these levels are not, they don't like running the ball because, you know, they get in to become a quarterback because they want to throw it. Uh, they might not be very good at running the ball. Okay. They're not comfortable. That's not what they're comfortable doing. They're comfortable handing it off or pitching it. And so I want to force him to run the ball. And so what I have been teaching my defensive ends, uh, the ones that I know are going to be red and, not, and be unblocked, I have taught them is that when they come unblocked and they know that they're not going to be blocked, they aim straight at the mesh point of the fullback and quarterback. They don't go and dive to take out, take out the fullback. They don't go and go straight for the quarterback. They want to go right for the mesh point. Because when I've done this, I've done this before, as a somebody who's coached the triple option offense before, it is murder on the quarterback to figure out if whether he should be giving the ball or he should be keeping it when the defense is attacking the mesh point. Um, 
And so that might be a hint for you guys who are trying to defend triple option. Attack the mesh point. Don't attack men. Attack the mesh point. And you're going to make the quarterback, you're going to force him to make a choice. Um, and so that's what I want him to do. But I really want him to keep that ball. Okay, I want him to hesitate and I want him to keep the ball. Uh, and so what I'm going to usually do is I'm going to roll my coverage, roll my coverage shell uh, with the motion of the wing back. So the next couple slides, I want to show you um, what I have done before, what I did uh, a few years ago, and it worked for us for the most part. And then I want to show you what I would do um, if I were using the 3-4 defense again to defend the exact same offense. All right, so alignment here, this is how I align with the 3-4. So I have my nose guard head up. I have my ends that are slightly shaded outside of the tackles. Uh, my backer, my inside backers are lined head up on the guards uh, about four, five yards deep, uh, most likely four yards because of the type of off offense we're facing. The uh, outside linebackers are slightly off the ball, but they are the, the end man on line scrimmage. Um, and they are going to be a little, like maybe a yard outside of the wing backs in their alignment. Uh, corners, I don't want them aligned too deep, but at the same time, a uh, triple option passing game is usually deep balls. There's not a whole lot of um, quick screens and stuff. There are some if some teams want to do it, but for the most part, if you're a traditional triple option team, you're throwing deep balls. Uh, and so I don't want them too close, and I don't want them too far away. Um, and so the safeties, I have two high safeties when I'm playing this offense. And so what I'm going to do, uh, I'll show you the next slide here. So this is what I have done before. Uh, this is what I did the one, the one team that I faced a few years ago when they played triple option against us. Uh, this was similar to what they were doing. And so whenever they would motion their wing back, so they, before the snap, they motioned their wing and this team did not run counter option. They didn't run counter option. They were a freshman level team. Uh, they really only ran inside veer and some play action passes. They didn't run a whole lot much different than that. Um, and so I was not afraid of rolling my coverage towards the, uh, the motion because the motion was telling us where that ball was going every single time. There were no counters to it. They didn't run any counters to it, um, which in my idea was a mistake. You got to have some kind of counter. And so I would motion, I would roll my coverage. I would have my, my weak side um, corner would go deep. He would bail. My uh, weak side safety would cover the middle of the field, and my strong side safety would go and cover this side of the field that the, cor other cor the strong side corner was in. Um, I did this because I thought this would help uh, with stopping the run game, and my strong side corner that year was a pretty good tackler. Uh, and he was pretty quick on his feet. And so what I would do, I would have um, both of my inside linebackers and my nose guard and my uh, backside defensive end. They were all keying on the fullback guy. They would key on the fullback guy. So I would have four players keying the fullback guy. Uh, and so if you notice how the, the offense works here, you, there's two players that are unblocked. And um, what I did, like I said a moment ago, so, sorry, excuse me, I forgot my backside outside linebacker. I would keep him here just in case he wouldn't rush. He would come up and he would sit and then he would chase. He would sit, make sure there's no counter coming, and then he would chase. Uh, they never, never showed counter against us. So that was almost a moot point there. Uh, my, like I said earlier, I teach my unblocked down linemen to attack the mesh point. We practice this over and over and over again, and so he knew exactly his, his direction where he was supposed to be going. He didn't attack a man. He came in and tried to blow up that mesh point as fast as he could. He came in like a crazy man. Okay, And this confused the heck out of that quarterback. Because he is reading, so we, in the triple option offense, we teach the quarterback read, the fullback mesh, if the unblocked down lineman goes down the line here and attacks the fullback, that's a keep read. You're keeping that ball. If he sits and hesitates, you're handing that ball off. 
Our guy was not doing either of those. Uh, he was attacking that mesh point like a crazy man. Okay, And even if he did hand the ball off, I already had two or three uh, defenders who were there to help stop that fullback dive. They did do a fullback dive a bunch in that game. Um, and the most success they found out of it was three yards at the most. And I know a lot of flex bone guys are saying, hey, that's a lot. Yeah, but that was at the most. Usually we stuffed it. Um, and so he would keep it, and he would uh, – this particular quarterback was not very good at staying on his path. He would try to bounce it out, which is not what you want to do as a flex bone. That actually helped us a little bit. Uh, and so he would keep this guy in pitch relationship. My corner covered pitch man. His man was pitch man. So if he saw all triple options coming his way, he forgot about the receiver, and he covered pitch man. Uh, and so we had somebody on the pitch man. We had somebody on the on the fullback mesh. If the quarterback kept it, I did not tell him to go upfield and attack. I told him to be parallel and um, play where the quarterback was going but take good angles. We taught him to take good angles. And so he wasn't attacking the quarterback until the quarterback attempted – to run the ball himself. Um, and so this tended to make the quarterback run the ball. And uh, for the most part, of course, there's going to be plays where you miss. Uh, for the most part, we ended up stopping it. However, they did beat us deep on two plays. And those were the only time that they scored. They scored on two uh, deep balls, and I believe that was because, in my personal opinion, that was because I had my safety, who is not necessarily a very good coverage guy, running over to cover this cor this receiver. This receiver was having an outside release, and he was he was just too fast for my safety to get back in coverage. Um, and they scored on us twice on that same play, uh, and so. What I would do differently if I were to uh, defend this again with the same defense, I would still teach my DN. I recommend teaching your DNs uh, to um, attack mesh point. Don't attack a man, attack a mesh point. Okay? Um, confuse that quarterback. I would have, we would still roll to the motion. Okay? And I still have a guy here who's, who's responsible for the counter. So we're still rolling to the motion. I'm not afraid of the counter because I still have a guy who's athletic. He's smart. We practice it. He knows to look for the counter. Um, the uh, strong side outside linebacker still has the quarterback. But on this time, I'm going to have the corners are going to lock man-to-man. -man, uh, and they're going to be on. We're basically be going to play uh, cover one. Either that or we're going to play cover three. Have the uh, weak side safety roller cover the middle third. This third, this third, either cover three, cover one, depends on the athletes I have, depends on the athletes they have. Um, and I would have the safety, who is probably, if you're doing it right, he's probably a better tackler than the quarter. I would have him come in, and he would get the pitch man. Okay, and this is something you have to practice over and over and over again until they get it. All right, so, so closing thoughts here is that many young quarterbacks are not comfortable running the ball, and I want to force them to be uncomfortable. Um, and I'm talking about in this particular offense. So some offenses like the spread read option, you do have quarterbacks who are comfortable running it. Um, but in this case, I want the quarterback to run the ball. We stopped the fullback dive and we stopped the wide back, the wing back pitch. That was a positive in our defense, but we did get beat a few times deep. That was a negative and that causes for some adjustments the next time we play this. Uh, we will need to make some adjustments based on scouting reports and game plan because not all flexbo teams are the same. Okay, Some have different athletes, some have different strategies. My job is to get my players in the best position for them to succeed. My diagram alone will not win the game for us. It's all about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. Um, and so I'm running out of time here, and so I want to finish up, and I want to say thank you uh, for sticking with me. Thank you for your support. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow my blog, and remember to stay obsessed.